Good day class. Today we're going to go over the quiz we took on Friday. And the purpose of this is so you get a better understanding of what is it that you did wrong on the quiz. And also to see, to go ahead and master these uh, ideas of what we're doing a little bit better. Now, first thing I want us to do is go, go over problem one. And one of the things I want us to do is, is read the instruction that says evaluate the limit by dividing by the powers of x. Now with this one, what we're going to have to do is you're going to identify the highest power in the denominator and divide everything by that. In this case, that value right there, x to the fifth. So what I'm going to do now is divide everything by x to the fifth. So I have 5x to the fifth divided by x to the fifth minus 3x cubed divided by x to the fifth divided by 9x to the fifth divided by x to the fifth minus 7x to the fourth divided by x to the fifth. Now from here we're going to go ahead and evaluate and one of the things we're going to be able to see is that those cancel, those cancel, and particularly two of these, three of these cancel with three of these down here so you're left with x, cube, x squared and four of the bottom ones cancel so you're just left with 7 to the x. Now there is something that occurs with these. When I take the limit, as x approaches infinity, okay, these in particular, these right here, this number is going to get so close to zero, we might as well call it zero, so it becomes zero, it cancels out. This part of it here, the same thing. It gets so close to zero when x goes to infinity that it might as well become zero, so it cancels out. So really what I'm left with is just this value as a denominator and this value as a numerator. So my solution is 5 to the 9th. So when I go ahead and write it down, the limit as x approaches infinity of 5x to the 5th minus 3x cubed divided by 9x to the 5th minus 7x to the 4th, you find out the answer is 5 over 9. And that is what you put down as a solution. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Now this one says evaluate x to the c by factoring and write and write it in the simplest terms. So with this one, we're going to have to go ahead and factor it. And one of the things, the, perf the, the numerator is a perfect square. So we can go ahead and do x plus 7, x minus 7. And in the denominator, we can factor out a 3. So I'll be left with x minus 7 once I factor out that 3. And conveniently this cancels with this so I'm really left with the limit as x approaches 7 of x plus 7 over 3. And that means that once I take the limit of this I evaluate it which means that x becomes 7 and I still have a 7 plus 7 equal to 3 so then I have a 14 over 3. So once I do the solution on this, I take the limit as x approaches 7 of x squared minus 49 over 3x minus 21 is equal to 14 divided by 3. And that would have been my solution for question 2. Now let's go ahead and now evaluate 3. It says evaluate the limit by testing. When we do testing, that means we're going to use our calculator and see what happens to the values in this case when x approaches infinity. So let me go ahead and now I'm going to go ahead and write a little small table here. So and I'm going to test the values like a thousand, ten thousand and I'll go up to a million and I'll see what's occurring in this case. <clears throat> now with this I had to bring out my calculator and first thing I'm going to do is clear it. So second plus 712. And then after that, I'm going to go into y equals type in my equation. 3 sine of x divided by x. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and go into second window because I have to change this independent to ask. And once I do that, I'm going to bring up the table and actually put down the values that I'm putting down here because I want to see what it goes, what happens when it goes to infinity. So at 1,000, it's at a number 0 0.022. Now let's type in 10,000. 
and you get actually this number right here means that there's five zeros you know how there's two zeros up here on the thousand this one actually means it has five zeros and now let's try a million number zero and then this one means it has six zeros now this is what is occurring and I think some people had difficult time viewing this uh, let me go ahead this is really point it's not doing it in this case. It's really, it's 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 values. I wanted to go ahead and see if this thing could write, but this let me write it over here. Okay, this is point. No, oh, it's not writing there either. Uh, let's see what it's doing. Okay, all right. I think I have it writing now. This one number was no, it's not writing. But the biggest thing I wanted to point out is that this value itself. Okay, this value. You see the negative 5. The negative 5 means that there's 5 zeros. The negative 6 means there's 6 zeros. This value is getting really close to 0 that it might as well become 0. As these values get bigger, okay, the values itself are getting so small. Let me write it over here. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Let me go ahead and... Okay. I think I'm able to write now. First one was 0 0.00248. The next one was uh, 0 0.0000. Uh, let's see. To the negative 9. And the next one was negative 0 0.00060. Zero 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 six zeros. Six. <clears throat> what is occurring in this case is that these values are actually becoming, are getting so close to zero, the number zero, that it might as well be considered the number zero. So let's go ahead and now put that down as our solution. Uh, you know, for some reason this thing is not cooperating. Let's see if it does it this way. My calculator seems like it might have froze up on me. <laughs> so if you bear with me a second, see if I can try to get this thing off the screen. Let's see if it does it by closing. I was not doing it by closing. Uh, let's see if I'm able to bring this up. Actually, it seems like the whole thing froze on me. Hold on a second. Let me see what I can do to fix this. Okay, we're back. And the, basically, the calculator wanted to freeze. It just got frozen. So, but let's go ahead and now write down our solution. Now we could uh, now put down that as x approaches infinity, of three sine of x divided by x is equal to zero. And the reason why we know is because of this table right over here. Now, this next question says evaluate the right and left limits and determine if the limit exists for the given value. Okay, now let's go ahead and do that. Now this right here is the right limit. And the reason why it's the right limit is because of the plus sign you see there. So let's go ahead and actually bring up the table. I have to turn on my calculator again. Got to get powered back up. <clears throat> and, and go ahead and see what's occurring with these values as it approaches 5 from the positive side. And we're going to do the same thing as 5 as it approaches it from the... Okay, so let me go ahead and reset my calculator again. Uh, bring that up. And move this just a little bit more this way so we can have both of them. Okay. So second plus seven one two. Oh. <laughs> seven one two. Let's see if it does it. Okay. Well, actually, second plus. Reset a second plus. I think I might have hit different values, but here, just. Uh, okay. Now let's. Um, Let's go ahead and type in the equation first of all. y equals x squared plus 1 divided by x minus 5. And from here, let me go ahead and bring up the second table, set, second window. And the reason being is I'm going to change this to ask. So I could put in specific values to see what is occurring to the table as it approaches. Now from the left side, I want to go ahead and determine the values like 5.1, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1
going to move this a little bit above 5.1 and then 5.01. Now I'm returning from the right side, so I'm looking for values that get closer from the right side of 5. Now, if you see the progression, this one's progressing to infinity, positive infinity, from these values that are here. Now, let's go ahead and see what's going on from the left side. From the left side, and the reason being is because that is a negative. That's how I know it's from the left. So from here, I'm going to go in now, put in values like 4.9. Four point nine nine four point nine 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 nine. And if you see these values are actually going to negative infinity. So with this one, we're going to negative infinity, which means the solution here, this one does not exist. And the reason being is because if you have if you take the limit from the left and right side and you get different values like what we do here, we get a positive and a negative infinity, then the solution does not exist. Excellent. Let's go ahead and move on to the back page of this quiz. Now, this one wants you to go ahead and evaluate using your calculator. And same thing, we're going to have to evaluate from the left side and from the right side. So I'm going to use the values. In this case, since I'm going to 3, I'm going to use the values 2.9, 2.99, 2.9999. And then from over here, 3.1, 3.01, 3.001. I'm going to bring up my calculator again. I'm going to go ahead and reset it. Well, actually, resetting it won't be necessary in this case, but let me go ahead and, uh, and bring up y equals. Clear out this equation. 5x divided by... I'm going to put double parentheses. 3 minus x squared, close parentheses. And second window, it's already on ask. Second table, I'm going to put in these values 2.9, 2.9999, 2.9999. We're getting values that are get bigger, so this one is going to oops. This one's going to positive infinity. Now let's see what happens on the other side of this. Let me try 3.1. 3.01. 3.01. One. Okay, so if you notice, these values are also going to positive infinity as well. So since both values are going to positive infinity, then my solution, as I take the limit, as x approaches 3 of 5x of 3 minus x squared, it's going to be going to infinity. That's my solution. Now let's go ahead and do the next problem. Evaluate the following limit involving square roots. What we're going to do with this one is go ahead and multiply the conjugate of the numerator in order for me to be able to evaluate this. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and multiply by 5 positive the square root of 25 minus x. And we're going to do it as a numerator and a denominator because... That's how we say mathematically balanced. Now, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do this kind of like when we do foiling. Just like when we foil, we do 5 times 5, which is 25. 5 times this, which is 5. Square root of 25 minus x. And then this negative times this, which is negative 5. Square root of 25 minus x. And lastly, when I take the square root and multiply with this square root, it's the same idea as taking the square root of x times the square root of x, which is equal to x, which means in this case, I'll have just a negative. If you notice, this, when I multiply two square roots, I'm left with what's just in the, the term that's left inside it. 
the same thing will happen here. I have 25 minus x. And I still have a denominator of x times 5 plus square root of 25 minus x. Now let's go ahead and do some simplifications. This cancels out with this. And I'm going to distribute this negative sign. So I'm going to be left now with 25 minus 25 plus x all over x 5 plus the square root of 25 minus x. And from here, these 25s cancel out. And also this x that you see here, I put a 1 because there's really 1 that's left over. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out the x's. And I'm going to be shown that I'm going to take the limit of x approach to 0 of my simplified equation, which is 1 over 5 plus 25 minus x. Okay, so this is what's going to happen in this case. I'm going to go ahead and take 1 over 5 plus the square root of 25 minus 0, which is 1 over 5 plus the square root of 25, which means I have 1, 5 plus 5, which means my solution is 1 over 10. So the limit as x approaches 0 of my original equation, 25 minus x, put the minus a little bit nicer. And I'll put the square look to look a little bit nicer. There you go. Over x is equal to 1 over 10 because of this. So that is my solution for this one. Now this one says use the quotient theorem to evaluate the limit. Now the quotient theorem just means we could take the limit. We could separate x approach 2 and take the numerator separate from the denominator in the evaluation. So that's all we had to do. So like in this case, all we had to do in this one is go ahead and just apply. We would have had 2 times 2 minus 2 times 2 plus 1 all over 2 squared plus 3 times 2 plus 2. This would have gave me uh, 4 minus 4 plus 1 all over... 4 plus 6 plus 2. So like in this case, I should have end up, these cancel, I should have end up with 1 over 12. So my solution, as I take the limit as x approach 2, using quotient theorem of x squared, oops, come on, let me do that, of x squared minus 2x plus 1 divided by x squared plus 3x plus 2, it should have came out being 1 over 12. And you would have got that as the answer. Okay. Now let's go ahead and do the last one. This one, they want us to evaluate the binomial limit expression. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to do a binomial expansion of this value up here. So now I'm going to use Pascal's triangle to do the shortcut. So 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. I'm going to stop there because I just need to number 4 because this is a number 4 right here. So in this case, all we have to do now is know that this is A and this is B. And when we do our binomial expansion, we start with our coefficient and then we start with the value A to the highest power. And B to the lowest, to zero. And then we continue and alternate. So four will be the next coefficient, which comes from there. I've used those two. And then I'm going to be doing three cubed now, h to the one, plus my next coefficient, the six, with now three squared times h squared. And now my last, well, not my last coefficient, but the next coefficient, which is 4. 3 to the 1 times h cubed. 
And then from here, we're going to do the next one. Let me pause. Okay, and we're back here. So now from here, we're going to do one. And now do, which is our last coefficient, and now we're going to do times 3 to the 0 times h to the 4th. <clears throat> now, from here, we're able to cancel this out and this out. And I'm going to evaluate just the expression what's left over. Um, 3 to the 4th power, I think it's 64, but I'm just going to double check so I can quit. 3 raised to the 4th power, actually 81. So, <clears throat> from here, we'll have 81 plus 4 times 3 cubed. Which is 108. Oh, one second, let me undo that. And let me bring up this. Okay, which is 108. H, and then the next one, which is 6 times 3 squared, which is 54, H squared, <clears throat> and 4 times 3, which is 12 H cubed, and then I'm left with H to the fourth. <clears throat> Now that's what this is what the simplified expression is. And what we're going to do now is Okay, what we're going to do now <clears throat> is actually add in the parts that we haven't added from the original equation. Remember, we haven't yet <clears throat> put this part or this part into our binomial expansion because all we really expanded was just this part right here. This is all we've done so far in this expansion right here. That's what 3 plus h to the fourth power equals. So let's go ahead and add these last two parts. Minus 81 all over h. Now some things cancel out for us. This 81 cancels out with that 81. And <clears throat> to give, I can, I'm able to factor out an h from each one of these and be able to go ahead and actually cancel out with this H here. So let's go ahead and apply that. Let's factor out this H that I have here. So I'll be left with 108 plus 54H plus 12H squared plus H cubed. And I'm all over H. These H's cancel out, and the only thing I need to do left is just take the limit as H approaches zero. So I need to take the limit as H approaches zero, which means this is really time zero. This is really time zero squared. And this is really time zero cubed. And we are all aware that all this becomes zero, so which means my solution is 108. as an answer. So when I write the solution down, I go ahead and write, and I take the limit as h approaches 0 of 3 plus 4, 3 plus h to the 4th minus 81 divided by h, it is equal to 108 as a solution. Okay, excellent. All right, class, it was a pleasure. Y'all taking a look at this video. Thank you.